All right. Hey, everybody. Sean McElroy here, back with our AutoLine exclusives. And uh, if you've seen some of these before, you've probably noticed me mention that the industry needs to do a better job of getting young talent to come into it, get interested in the topics. And joining me today, I've got a student with me, Garish Kotagiri. So, and you know, I know a little bit about you. I, obviously, automation is uh, is a big thing that you're kind of into, but you know, go, you know, give me a little bit more, you know, how did you get it, uh, it interested in the automation and, uh, you know, what are some of the things that you like about it? Oh, uh, well, um, I've always been interested in like robotics and engineering and, uh, with like math and science, but it really, really kicked in last year when I did an internship at the automotive supply company. And, uh, it was like a small role, but it was still really fun. And it got me engaged into like this world of robotics that I never knew existed. And I got to work on one piece of manufacturing equipment, a robotic arm. And even though it was a small role, I wrote a program for the uh, vision sensor where it would map two ping pong balls at a fixed position across from each other. And I just thought that was so cool that there was I was writing the program for that. And then that was going to be put on an end effector of a robot that would now be able to pick any part out of a bin and reorient it and replace it. So that was like my first taste into the world. So I was like hooked. And uh, I found myself with a lot of time on my hands after this pandemic. And so I thought I'd really research into this uh, field because I thought there was a lot more that could be applied. And especially with the, the times going on, what, what could be different if automation was uh, encouraged? Yeah, no, that's a great point that, you know, just having this extra time while we're all kind of locked up at home is, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, it's cool because, I mean, I, I can't imagine there's uh, too many people that you know, uh, go and do an internship about robotic arms and go, ah, that's it, man, this is great. <laughs> uh, you know, that's what I want to get into. So I, I find that really cool. So, I mean, that kind of touches uh, that uh, almost like an industry 4.0 kind of thing where you're teaching robots to be able to do more in any sort of assembly process than I take it, huh? Yeah. So there's, uh, there's really a lot of uh, the three types of automation that these manufacturers are allowing. And like the, the most common one is the, like the fixed one, which is like what a, what a watch would do basically is one, one set of tasks and it'll just do that over and over again because that's what the, the physical hardware is set for. And then the other one we're seeing more and more often is um, the programmable automation where you can input software for the hardware to continuously do a new task or the same task in a, in a, in a set new variable. And the one that was really interesting now that we're tapping into is the uh, flexible automation where the hardware uh, and software can change to make uh, the more the, make a more efficient floor space and a uh, uh, higher production rate. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously great points uh, to some of the advantages of uh, automation and, you know, it, it, I, if I got this right here, you wrote a, a whole paper all about automation and AI and manufacturing. So I find that really cool. Uh, Thank you. Was there any other sort of things that you uh, found that were really interesting when you were writing this paper? Yeah. So I found a lot of like uh, misconceptions into the world of automation that I, I also fell in, uh, into. And um, there's actually uh, cool, new, interesting emerging trends with automation that I discovered when I looked further into it. And I think a big issue is what uh, with job displacement when talking about automation. And that's what I noticed immediately. And I think that's an issue that we can work around if, if uh, policies and other programs are set in place so that we encourage the growth of it. So yeah, no, it, yeah. I was just going to say, no, it's a great point. I mean, that's it's something that always comes up whenever, you know, on our show that we do, we'll talk a lot about different technologies that are coming in. And that's something always that kind of strikes through into the comments section mm -hmm. is that, uh, you know, wh what's it going to do for people down the road? Right. So right now, uh, the only automation, the only jobs automation is set to take is repetitive and monotonous work. And the only thing that we can do right now is try to like, uh, create transitional programs for the people working those jobs to get a new soft skills or new creative skills, which uh, robots will never be able to replace in, the, in any future. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, uh, you look at someone like Tesla, who at first said that he wanted to do all of his production with robots and everything, and then realizes mm -hmm. later on, like, wow, this is a little more difficult than maybe we thought. And, right. you know, he's saying that people are a big part of what they do because 
you know, robots are fantastic and they can do a ton, mm -hmm. but hands being able to, you know, the, the dexterity right. and being able to grip little things and, you know, see what you're doing and make small adjustments to that. There's still a, a big need for that. And at least in certain areas, for sure. Right. That's why I think the focus should more be into human robot collaboration rather than full robot manufacturing, because yeah. I think that would make the most efficient uh, workspace for any company or any yeah, so, manufacturer. So, I mean, for people that maybe don't know, in a big manufacturing plant, you have these gigantic machines and they usually have curtains that are set up around them when they're operating, mm -hmm. because if a, a big robot arm swings around and hits somebody, you know, it's not uh, going to stop. The person is going to, you know, keep flying sort of thing. So, but cobots, cobots are really interesting. They might have sensors on them or around them. And, you know, they're essentially aiding the worker. Exactly. Exactly. Making everything more efficient in the workspace is, that, is the only goal of adding any autom automation to the floor. So one thing, you know, as I tipped off at the top of the show here is a, something that I've said is uh, the industry needs to do a better job of attracting younger talent to it. I'm wondering if there was maybe something that you could identify that really kind of grabbed you or or even if there's something that the industry could do that you think they could do to attract more people like yourself. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things. And I think the biggest thing was the internship for me. I didn't even know that those uh, opportunities were available once I heard about it and was able to go in there and do hands-on work and uh, apply something that I've only seen in like, you know, some science fiction book or some movie. I mean, that's really got me hooked. And I think if uh, a lot of other people I know got that experience, they would have definitely, definitely gotten some interest toward that. Yeah, for sure. Well, <laughs> it, at least in the terms of uh, automation, I mean, uh, obviously we, we've talked a little bit about manufacturing here, but it, it, it spreads way beyond that. Is there anything right. in the automotive uh, specter there that, grabs your attention beyond just like uh, manufacturing as well? Uh, I haven't deep, dig deep enough to, to find any more interest yet. I've, I've kind of just stuck on this, but there's a, from what I barely scratched the surface, it seems like there's a lot more to be done in the world of the automation and manufacturing. I'm curious, have you uh, ever had any experience in uh, any sort of self-driving situation? Uh, any cars or like uh, advanced uh, ADAS technology? I got one uh, one uh, opportunity to do it was at the same internship. I was allowed to sit in one of the uh, test autonomous vehicles when they were testing their their sensors for a pedestrian. And I think they were using, I believe it was like LIDAR systems. And I was like the first time I've ever heard of those sensors being able to communicate that image right there back to the vehicle to know to stop. And that was the first time I've ever seen that. And it was, it was really cool to watch and be in the car to see. Yeah, no, I mean, it's quite the experience when you you first get to do it because right. it's totally just foreign to you at first. And, yeah. you know, there's there's that sense like, oh, like, is this machine smart enough to get me safely to the point that I want to go? Or at least that was, yes. you know, how I was. I've uh, had the chance to, you know, do Tesla autopilot and GM's uh, first iteration of Super Cruise, not the new one yet. So, yeah, it was just uh, very interesting, and you know, you you make you want to make sure you're alert and uh, paying yeah. attention to everything that's going on there right away. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a different feel of driving. It feels I'm, I'm interested to see what the future that holds. Where I wonder what the new driver would look like, or what the new car is really capable of. Yeah, you know, I I question it myself. Um, <laughs> I have a couple of young kids, and. Uh, my oldest daughter, it won't be 2030 until she gets her driver's license, or at least she's eligible to get her driver's license. And I always wonder, what's what's the automotive space going to look like then? Right, it, right. It could be completely different to, to what it is now. Exactly. I mean, it, it's crazy to even see the stuff within the robotics, like in the last 20, 30 years, how much it's grown. It's It's been exponential just to see. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, geez, even in the last five years, it just and just to, to keep going on the manufacturing front, just in manufacturing alone, the right. amount of automation and artificial intelligence that's come into that space is is quite amazing. Right, right. And it's just I wonder what what what's the next steps to, to aid it and without uh, restricting its growth, which seems like a, a big issue right now. 
Yeah, I mean, do you do you have any idea what the ne next steps might be, or are there like any concepts in the world of automation that kind of you know get you geeked up for what may be coming in the future? Uh, I don't I don't really know any right now, but I mean, just the the implementation stuff where they right now they do business cases and case studies of what what could be if they were to implement these new uh, like uh, cells. That's pretty interesting to me to show like wh what kind of work it's capable of. And I don't know what would be the best approach to to be able to aid this further other than creating like vocational programs for workers to transition from those manufacturing jobs so we can implement more robotic cells. But as far as that, I don't know where else we would go from there, just scratching the surface. Well, it seems like you got some time to figure that out. Uh, so, so where do you go from here? Are you uh, are you still in high school now? Are you off to college? What's uh, what? Where's your the next chapter of your story? Uh, I'm just. This is my summer of junior year, so I'm going into senior year next year. So I got I got some more time on my hands, I guess. Hopefully, this year goes well. <laughs> and um, I'm I'm curious to see what happens. I wanted to keep uh, pursuing this and keep uh, looking into it and see what else I can do. Uh, oh. but hmm? yeah, yeah, no, I was, so you would like to continue, uh, studies in along, along this lines then, huh? Right. I want to see if there's any uh, courses I can take in school that would help me with this. I know there's computer science courses and I know now like the robotics thing is a thing I'm very interested in. So those clubs and see what I can do with a, another club maybe. Yeah, no, that's very cool. And, uh, you know, obviously we kind of pointed out here that there there's still more to do. There's still uh, a, a lot to be done. And uh, it seems like you, you'll have plenty to do uh, to figure out and uh, work your way into the industry. <laughs> I hope so. I hope I can get my way in. <laughs> yeah, no. And uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, you and I actually kind of have something in common here. Uh, your dad is an ex executive in the industry and my dad has always been an expert too. So, you know, uh, I, I find it kind of interesting that uh, the son of one automotive expert gets to interview the son of another automotive expert. And hey, here we both are interested in at least some of the same things that our father are, our fathers are and, uh, you know, yeah. somewhat following in the path, we'll say. Exactly. I mean, so, I don't know. I, maybe if I got forced down this way, but I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> and don't feel like forcing. I mean, you obviously have a passion for it and it, it comes through. So, I mean, if you do come in the industry at first, people always, you know, compare you to your father. But I say, yeah, you got to work hard and all that. But just be yourself, man. And eventually <laughs> those comparisons just kind of trickle away and you're just left with you. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> so yeah, no, it, it's really cool. I, I wish you the best of luck and uh, really hope to see you sometime down the road here uh, talking to you about advanced automation and stuff like that. Well, thank you. I hope so too. <laughs> I look forward to that. Awesome. Garish Kodagiri, I really want to thank you for your time today. It's really, like I've said, it's just really interesting to get someone else's perspective and ex especially someone, you know, I, I know you're a, a young guy, but no one ever likes having that pointed out to them, <laughs> but uh, no, it's really cool to get a perspective uh, from your perspective, I should say. Well, thank you for giving the opportunity to talk. I mean, you, you, I love auto line and I love, you know, what you're, I used to listen to your dad every day on the way to school. So I really appreciate what you guys do. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you sometime soon. I'm sure. I hope so. See you guys soon. Yeah. Take it easy. Bye.